What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, and of course, this is my channel, Barnon 11970. And as always, I thank each and every one of you for taking the time to view this video. We're going to drop some more learning on you, so hang tight. I don't know how long this video will be. I'm going to try and keep it shorter, if possible, but you guys know me. If I go on a roll, I'm just going to stick with it. This is going to be basically geared towards the people that are willing to listen and are at a certain level to understand or what I like to say these days, understand. Now, if you're new to my channel, some of the things you might hear from the past couple of videos may seem different, may seem strange. You may not be able to get it at this point. Uh, one thing I would highly recommend is check some of my other videos. You can go to my main page and look under my must-watch section and just watch a bunch of my videos so you can kind of get up to where I am. Now, that doesn't mean I'm better than you. It doesn't mean I... I have some kind of gift or whatever. I just, it's like going to school. You know, a kindergartner isn't going to understand a college professor. So you have to get on the same page. So with that being said, let's get into some more information. That's basically what I like to call downloaded into my system. Um, my days pretty much of researching things are pretty much over. And I've now trusted my inner self to get the information that I need. Whether that resonates with you or not, that's not my concern. I'm not here to try and tell anybody what to do. I'm going to give my advice. Basically, my my job is to show you paths that you didn't know existed. It's up to you whether you want to walk them or not. So with that being said, let's get into it. We're going to start helping those willing to listen or wanting to listen. How you could start eliminating the fear. It's basically understanding things or, again, like I like to say, understanding. Because fear is one of many ways of control. Now, um, I haven't made videos in the past couple of days because I actually, believe it or not, because of that toothpaste video that I made, that's the last video I made before this one, um, just the fact of opening that container of fluoride toothpaste, which I don't use fluoride because it's a, it's a neurotoxin, by the way, actually made me sick. So I was sick for about two days. The funny part is it was so bad that the old me would have been in the hospital, or it would have been very serious. But within 24 hours, I already started losing some of the, um, some of the symptoms. Within 48 hours, it was probably 80% 80 80 better. And uh, after that, I was back doing my regular work. And I just took a couple of days off. So um, I like to do that every now and then to kind of recharge the battery, so to speak. But the benefits of when I was actually sick, and this is the beautiful thing about the sun gazing, that's other videos that I have, please watch them. Um, it helps your recovery system. So within that time period, I was able to have some very interesting dreams and some very interesting alone time to start concentrating on things. And one of the big things I used to always preach about how they easily can control people's influences is through fear. Now, that is absolutely true, but that is not the only thing. And I've actually discovered, basically, there is something much larger than the fear to be able to control people, and it happens to all of us. And what they've done is they've created a system that was once based on facts, evidence, proof, truth, and changed it all into a belief system. Here's the problem when it comes to belief. You can have the same topic, and you can have people on this side not believe it, and people on this side believe it. But this is still the same thing. Whether it's true or not is based on perception. So what they've learned is if you can get people to believe in things, you can have two sides arguing over the same thing and ultimately end up fighting each other and still learning the truth about what they're making you believe. This happens to all of us. This happened to me. It happened to you. It happens to all of us in the world because everything is based on a belief. Whether you talk about aliens, whether you talk about 9-11, whether you talk about um, the history of governments, Illuminati, you name it. Religion, it's based on beliefs. It's not based on facts. Beliefs are basically a way to control the people by saying this is what sounds good or does not sound good. And you're not going to check it. You're just going to take our word for it. And that is a form of control. And that is why when somebody like myself or others 
speak about something, there are going to be two sides to that same coin. You're going to have people that say, I believe what he says and not check anything, which is bad. And you'll have other people on this side that say, I don't believe what he's saying and they don't check anything. And that's bad. So in either perspective, in a way, it's technically bad because if you take a person's word for something or not just dismiss something without verification for yourself, then you are hoping the person you're listening to is being honest or dishonest and you're not willing to take the responsibility to verify it. Now, some things you cannot just verify, but they're counting on you to just either believe something because it resonates with you or not believe in something because it doesn't. Either way, they've got you because you're not making the effort to look where you're supposed to look. And throughout my years of doing these videos, I have finally learned that, and it's simple because many people have said it, but you have to understand it yourself. It all has to come from you. They want you to listen to everybody else. They want you to not listen to certain other people. They want you to believe or not believe. But the majority of people will not research or they will not check within themselves. They're always looking for validation. They're always waiting for somebody else to justify what they're doing is right or wrong. And that's why you'll see people that don't agree. They'll find other people that don't agree because it helps validate their belief system. And the same thing comes on the other side of the spectrum where the people will always try and associate with the people that believe them because it validates their belief system. If you want true inner peace, if you want that next devil, step, devil, the next level of enlightenment, you have to stop looking out there and start looking and feeling in here, inside you. So I'm going to help push you in that direction for those who want it. Or well, I can't say push because that means it's a, that's a force. I'm going to help guide those who are willing to listen. And that's the one thing certain people that are quote unquote enlightened never really understand or understand is their job as teachers should be to help teach others. Because at one time, every teacher was once a student and they should never forget that. And that's one of the reasons why I refuse to ever stop what I'm doing. Because at one time I was the student and now according to people that love to listen to what I say, they're seeing me as a teacher. So for me to lose that humbleness of where I came from, would mean that everything I've learned hurt myself and changed my point of view. And I'm not going to let that happen. And neither should you. So let's start losing some of the fear. First thing, like I said, you have to get rid of a belief system. You cannot base anything in your life based on what sounds good. Because the people that are in control of everything, they are counting on you to never ver verify. Because they'll always come up with things that sound logical. Like, I'll give you a prime example. When you think of, let's just talk about the alien thing. When people talk about what happened, the incident in Roswell, where they said there was an alien spacecraft. Well, actually, they didn't say an alien spacecraft. Be very careful of the words, because words can trick you. They said a UFO was spotted. Now, what is a UFO? Unidentified flying object. Does that mean it has to come from a spaceship, an alien spaceship from another world? It could, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, if a government makes a spaceship or a rocket ship or some kind of movable object that you've never seen before, well, that would still be an unidentified flying object. They've gotten you through movies to be programmed to think a UFO means alien. Programming. So, Roswell, let's just say whatever it was. An unidentified flying object, what did they do to justify it to make it go against either it was an alien spaceship or it was some kind of military experiment going wrong? Well, they made up an excuse and they said, well, it was a weather balloon and it was this and it was that. And people say, wait, that sounds logical. I'll believe that. Now, let me show you how irrelevant belief is. Let's say my name is Chris, which you all know because I've said it every single time. Now, if I say to a, the first person that ever hears this, like a new person's watching this right now and say, hi, my name is Chris. And that person on the other end of this computer says, you know what? I don't believe his name is Chris. Well, just because he doesn't believe my name is Chris, does that mean that's not my name? Of course not. So just because he didn't believe me based on his belief system does not change 
what is. And on the other same part of the spectrum, let's say I say, well, guys, I just wanted to let you know my name is really not Chris. I've been not telling you the truth because I'm trying to protect my identity, trying to hide who I am. My name is really John. And everybody that watches my channel says, you know what? I believe him. But my name really is still Chris. Just because you believed me, does that mean my name really is John? No. So again, on either end of the spectrum, belief is irrelevant, and that is how they get you. Because when they don't want you to believe something, they will come up with some logical explanation that can be a possibility, or may even just sound good, and you'll say, wait a minute, that sounds plausible. I will believe that. End of story, you don't verify it. In other words, not trying to disprove them or find out the simple case of maybe they made an error. Or the extreme case of they are absolutely lying to you. This is how you have to think about your life when it comes to how you are in more control than you will ever believe. And I always use analogies because people seem to tell me that I put it in perspectives that makes them see it in ways that other people can talk about until they're blue in the face, but be able to understand better. So I don't do it to try and belittle people's intelligence. I do it because I want to make it so people understand. Think of your life like you being taught how to drive. Now, you can go to any class you want. You can go to any professor. You could read every book you want about driving. And you could learn all the book smarts and they can tell you, you know, you can go to a driving instructor and he'll tell you everything you need to know, but make you watch every kind of movie and you learn everything. But to actually learn how to drive, you have to get behind the wheel and drive. And you're going to make mistakes at first. You're not going to have the confidence because you've never done it before. So it's going to sound, it's going to seem scary the first time you try and merge into a, a highway full of people. And you can have a driver and instructor right there trying to teach you, okay, calm down. I'm here to help you. So it's okay to listen to people. But you have to understand you're behind your wheel for your vehicle. Your shell of a body is your vehicle carrying your light, your being, your soul, your energy, who you really are. This body is nothing more than a shell. So we can come here and experience whatever reason why we're here to experience whatever we're here to experience. The problem with most people in the world is they are so in, so afraid to believe. And again, belief, because that's what they do. They're afraid to believe that they don't even realize that they're in that car and they won't touch the steering wheel. And they're afraid to, because they're like, well, teach me how to drive. You drive for me. I don't want to do it. I don't want to take the responsibility. That requires work. What if I get into an accident? What if I don't know where to turn? What if I give the wrong signal? What if I get pulled over? And they sit there, I don't want to touch that steering wheel. And they're waiting for that driving instructor to do it for them. There's nothing wrong with listening to people. And that's why I can listen to people that some people like and some people don't like. I don't care what anybody's opinion is of someone else. What my opinion of them is, it matters. Because you can get good things from good people, and you can get good things from bad people. Sometimes you can learn what not to do based on bad people's experiences. Like, if you ever seen the, sh the TV show, It Takes a Thief? Well, those were once criminals that used to rob houses for a living. And through their experience, they taught... People, after they decided that's not the way they want to go anymore, for whatever reasons they had, they started teaching people, well, since we were once criminals, we're going to teach you ways of how we got into your house so you can protect yourself. So you can get good out of anything. It's all a matter of perspective. But if you limit yourself to just one situation and you don't go in without an open mind and you just base it on belief system, you're never going to listen to the bigger picture. So I have discovered that I'm driving my own car. I no longer have to be afraid, but it's okay to have a driving instructor in the beginning to ask questions. It doesn't mean you have to accept everything they say, or it doesn't mean you can't just take a little bits and pieces of it and incorporate it into your own system. Because ultimately you are responsible. And I've said that in how many videos, you're always responsible for what you do and what you don't do. 
So like the title of this video, one of the things is exposing the whole Illuminati system. Now, one of the things I've been gifted in at this point, or had some luck or power, ability, I don't know what you want to call it, is being able to see things in a different perspective and understanding hidden meanings behind them. Do I know how I did got this? No. Are these things you can find a link for? Absolutely not. These are things that I've discovered on my own. What you want to do with them is up to you. I'm just providing it. Now I'm going to show you an image that has been used to scare more people on the internet, especially in the past couple of years, than I've ever seen, which I have decided, what I have discovered, what the real meaning is, and not by asking anybody or having anybody tell me, it's by actually seeing it for what it really is, and I'm going to show it to you and tell you what this really means. Now, how many times have you guys seen this symbol? It's the triangle with the eyes, and you'll see the radiation lines all over the place. This, for the fear porn people, is the satanic world, is the control world of how they're going to kill you, and you can't show that sign because it means you're a satanist, it means you're that, no, no. Again, that's all belief. If, that, if you want to believe all that stuff, if you love being scared, if that, that scaredness makes you into a better person and you could take a positive experience out of it, then, you know, go for it. But I'm going to show you what it really means based on my downloaded information that I've gotten the past couple of days when I actually was sick and in bed. So I actually was glad I was sick. I healed well because of my sun gazing and using the actual nature to heal myself. But the dreams and the things I th talked about help me understand or understand what's going on here. So I'm going to, I'm going to show that with you. I'm going to be your driving instructor. Now that of course, they always show a single eye. Now, if you take that literally, that just means, oh, well, it's an eyeball. Well, if you take it phonetically, an eye, I am the eye. Like you hear in the Bible, when they ask who God is, he says, I am. And you've heard this before, where they always say when you're meditating, look into yourself, look into the me, into the self, to seek what you need. Look into yourself and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. So if you see it phonetically, they're trying to tell you right there, the I. The I is you. Now, what does an I do? The physical I. Well, it sees. So you know how I've always, I've said in recent videos about how when people are very smart, and they have a lot of knowledge. They say, wow, that, that person's full of insight. In sight. Inner sight. So if you see this symbol, that eye is not meant to be satanic and it's not meant to be scary, but they'll be very happy to have millions of people actually think that because then they can manipulate them in any way they want based on fear. One of the ways they can control you. And then based on the belief of what you are f afraid of, they have the second means to control you. They're talking about inner sight. The eye, searching, looking, seeing, see within yourself, the single eye. Let, if your eye be single, it will fill with light. What is light? Light is energy. What is God made of? God is made of light. That is why he says, I am the light of the world, and you are made in God's image. They're talking scientifically. So when you see this symbol, if you want to think it's satanic and all that other scary stuff, and you want to have your fear porn so you can have thousands of views on your video, so you can make profit off of other people's fear, then you're part of the con contribution, and they're using you. Congratulations. Your belief system is going against what you may be trying to do, but I don't know your true intentions. Now, what is the triangle? Because you notice there's always the eye inside this triangle. Well, if you think about that, you think of it as the Holy Trinity encased in the eye. In other words, your eye, yourself, your inner sight encased in the Father, which is the Creator, which is God, whichever way you want to think of Him. I think of it as a singular consciousness that was based on an experience throughout the world. You have the Father, the Son, which is you, because that's God's creation, and the Holy Spirit which is your essence, your light, your soul. And then you'll also see the ray, the lights, the beams of lines coming out of them, the golden rays. Well, what is that? That's the sunlight. That's the energy. That's the vibration, how it's moving at the speed of light. If your eye be single, let it fill with light. So you know what? They show this on the dollar bill. They have all these videos talking about Illuminati and all the scariness. And so many people believe in it. They're controlling you. 
and making you not really look inside yourself. So anybody that really knows what this symbol is, and I can guarantee you and I will challenge anybody that is part of this Illuminati system to prove me wrong. And I didn't ask anybody in the Illuminati. I didn't search for it anywhere in the Illuminati. I actually looked at it. And with my inner knowledge of the things that I've learned recently, I've discovered the truth of what the symbol really means. It's talking about the Holy Trinity surrounding your own eye, and they're talking about the letter I, which is you, seeing. So seeing through yourself. In other words, stop looking for answers everywhere else. Stop having everyone else guide you wherever you think you're supposed to go, and look within yourself and trust and take responsibility. Otherwise, others will be happy to take your consent and push you in a, an agenda that they can profit from. Because that's what it's always been about. Because here's the beautiful thing that they will never tell you that I'm about to. So write this down, ladies and gentlemen, or pay very close attention to this. They cannot control you unless you give them permission. Now, that may sound weird, but I'm going to explain it, and I'm going to use some examples that you might understand, and I've done this in previous videos. The way that they get people to consent is through their silence, because you're not arguing the fact. If you know anything about law, and I have several videos that talk about this, you don't have to be a lawyer to know law, just like you don't need to be a chef to be able to cook. Keep that in mind. You can study law all you want. You don't just don't have to get a law degree to become a lawyer for it. Just like you don't have to go to a cooking class to learn how to cook. You know, sometimes you just take a couple of eggs, put them in a pan, and you know what? You just made an omelet. Add a couple of uh, other ingredients. You didn't need a license for that. So the way they control you is through your consent, through your ignorance, and through your belief system. Whether you believe or disagree, or disbelieve, they got both of you. Because what you're doing is you're believing or disbelieving someone else's idea or situation instead of listening inward to yourself. And there are people who take advantage of you for it and profit off of you for it and counting on your naivety, your trust, your loyalty, your emotions, your guilt, your, your ability to want to just help the world. And it's drowning in good intention. And I was that way for the longest time until I understood what's really going on. So let me put it in a way that some people might understand or understand better. If you know anything about the history of vampires, now I'm not saying vampires are real, so I'm not, don't take this literally. But if you look at the storyline of the creation of vampires, vampires can only enter a home if they are invited. In other words, a vampire, if they want to suck the blood out of some village in somebody's house, they can't just go in, break in, and do what they got to do. They actually literally have to get permission to allow to be entered into their house to kill them. That's the folklore. Now, again, I'm not saying they're real. Imagine if, and I've, said, well, I've done this in other videos, but I, I need this for especially for new people to, to understand. Imagine... Somebody knocks on your door, and you open the door, and there's Count Dracula. And he says, hi, I'm a vampire. I feed off of the blood of others to be able to survive, and I need your permission to come into your house to kill you. So, can I come in? Well, unless you have a suicide wish, you're going to say no, and you're going to slam the door. Problem solved. In other words, you took control. But this is how they get everyone, or... The majority of everyone. Let's say you and your buddies decide to go out drinking one night. And you're at your local bar, hanging out with all your friends. You're drinking, having a great time, listening to the music, shooting pool, doing this, flirting with a bunch of girls. And a bunch of girls come over to you. And you think you guys are the men. And you get interested in one girl. You're talking all night. You're both drinking together and having a great time. And by the end of the night, she's so drunk, you're so drunk. She says, you know what? I want to go home with you. And you say, yeah, that's a great idea. Come on home. And as you get to the door, you walk in and she kind of stands behind. And you're like, well, what's the matter? Well, it's like, I, you know, I don't normally do this and I feel a little uncomfortable. It's like, I don't know if I'm even welcome in your house. You know, is it all right if I come in? 
And you turn around and like, hell yeah, it's all right to come in. Come on in. Well, she comes in and guess what? You find out she was actually a vampire. Well, guess what? Even though she deceived you, you still invited her in. So it doesn't matter how it got done. It got done. And now, through your consent, through your ignorance, through your trust, through your belief that that was just a regular girl that you met at a bar, you will pay the ultimate price. So the whole system is based on belief. They don't care if you believe what they say, and they don't care if you don't believe what they say. What the goal is that no one seems to under or understand is either way, they've got you because they're taking your inner thought, your inner ability to realize the power that you have because you are a creation and part of the universe, which makes the universe perfect because the universe can't be perfect if you're not there, is they get you to go outside for your advice, for your information, for your trust. And instead of going for inner knowledge, you go to outer belief. So they got both sides. So they don't care if you're scared. They don't care if you're entertained. They don't care if you're trying to teach people the right thing. They got the majority of people because belief systems takes you outside of yourself. And it gives it consent to the others to take that maze that they put you in, that you think you're free to walk around, and move the walls when you can't see them. And say, oh, trust me, just go that way. You'll be fine. And maybe you will be fine. Or maybe you won't. If you want to put your effort into somebody else, especially when we know the system's corrupt, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. So ultimately, they are going to scare people with this. They're going to be people that I've talked about. They're not going to believe this. They're going to be people that watch this and see that, and they are going to believe it. How many of you are going to know it? How many of you are going to understand it to get that feeling of, wait a minute, I don't have to believe, but I have to know. And that takes work. That takes effort. That takes inner strength. That takes the real courage. It's easy to hate somebody. It's easy to just say, oh, oh, that guy's an idiot. I don't trust him. I don't believe him. He doesn't make any sense. It doesn't resonate with me, so I'm not going to believe him. Congratulations. You're one step closer to going nowhere. Is your life any better? Because I challenge any of the people that have problems with what I talk about to show me how they're improving the world any better, if they're doing anything positive. It's easy to destroy. Anybody can take anything and break it. That takes no effort. It takes no intelligence. But can you make a creation? Can you do good? And what this purpose of videos like this and all the others that I do is trying to get people to see, wait a minute, hey, I have more control than they've ever let me believe. So that's why they, they love when people put out these Illuminati videos. They love when people put out these satanic videos. They love when they talk about, oh, what the government's going to do and how they're with this terrorist. And now they're building these terrorists. And now they're doing this because they got you thinking everywhere except here and here. They got you. They had me. Once you realize that you are Dorothy and you have the power to go home all along, you'll notice that those shoes that she was wearing were irrelevant. They meant nothing. She had the power all along, which means even before she had those ruby red slippers on, she just had to go through the experience to gain the wisdom through the brain and the courage with the heart and the love. That's why you had the scarecrow, the lion, and the tin man. You had heart, courage, and brains. In other words, the wisdom through intelligence of research, the heart to use love to guide your way, and the bravery to realize that you can overcome everything because fear is nothing more than a choice. So if you want to believe in the devil, if you want to believe in hell, that is a choice. You can't prove it other than what you've read. So that is a belief system. That is a form of control. That is how they get you. Because then, instead of you searching in your inner self to realize there is no such thing as Satan, it's, it's Satan is as real as Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny, 
and they sound plausible because if you tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth, and they've been doing this for thousands of years, they make you say, well, what if? What if I'm wrong? I guess I better be good for goodness sake. Well, they got you controlled, don't they? Or on the other end of the spectrum where people say, oh, there's no such thing as God. Well, not in the way they program you to believe. It's not some bearded white man sitting on a cloud telling you that he loves you unconditionally, but he has conditions that'll punish you. Isn't that contradictive? Unconditional means unconditional, no conditions, which means if God is unconditional love, then you could murder five million people, and although the people will hate you, God would still love you. And if God is a singular consciousness that has created everything and you are nothing more than God experiencing life through your eyes and through your perspective so he can understand why everything is the way everything is, things get in a better perspective. Because again, and I have other videos about this, it's all about the fact that if you break everything down to a molecular structure, everything is based on atoms, which is nothing more than particles of light moving at different levels of vibration. The lower the vibration, the more solid something appears. And through magnetism, it attracts more light particles together. So the more condensed particles you have, the more solidity you see. It's an illusion that you think is real. And if you want to base things on belief, you are going to be controlled your entire life. Your family, your friends, your loved ones, your children, your parents. They will forever be controlled because they've gotten people lazy. They've gotten people trusting the wrong people. You're trusting the criminals to do the investigations on the very events that they caused themselves. And you believe them when they say they find no evidence. And yet we allow it through our consent. And our consent is through our silence. And when you talk about law, now I'm not talking man's law, I'm talking about the law of the universe. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So the only person you have to blame is yourself. So after a video like this, if you just want to shut it off and say, oh, that was a waste of my time, that's your choice. If you want to go and say, why, I want to listen to everything that this person says because I believe everything he says. That's your choice. But what I recommend is you use a little bit of both. You use common sense to listen to everyone. Get what you can that feels right so you can be guided in a certain way. But understand it's your path that you have to cross. You're driving your car. If you allow somebody else to drive that car and they get into an accident and you're in that car, you put the responsibility of your life in somebody else's hands because you're too afraid to touch that wheel because you never know. You might not be able to be as good a driver as you think you are. Lose the fear. Like they, a smart man once said, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt, but who knows if he was the first or the only, and I could be wrong if that's the person, but it's irrelevant, that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. What does that mean? Well, what he's trying to say is fear is a choice. It's nothing more than a response to a, an illusion, one illusion to another, because everything is an illusion. See this? The only reason my hands are not passing through each other is because the molecules in this hand are going to match the molecules in this hand, and there is no space for them to go between. But other than that, there are light particles that make up this hand. There are light particles that make up this hand that are vibrating at the speed of light, which is 186,400 miles per second. But because they are evenly matched, they are not going to be able to go through each other. But yet you can open your window on a sunny day and you can watch sunlight come right through. Not one break in the glass. And that's why you can listen. You can turn up your stereo and pump that bass and you could feel that bass three doors down. Because it's nothing more than vibration. When it's at different levels, it can literally pass through things. Because the funny part is, and the ironic part is, it's not real. That's the illusion. The solid is the illusion. That's why if you ever saw the movie What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams, and he first ends up when he supposedly kills himself and supposedly goes to his heaven, and he's there with Cuba Gooding, um, Cuba Gooding Jr., and he's asking where God is and all this. And he's talking about the fact that the illusion is real. It's the solid that is actually the illusion. 
and he taps him on the head. They're trying to send the messages and let people know that your eyesight, universally speaking, is almost blind because you only see a tiny bit of all of the light spectrums there are. And what they've conditioned you to think is if you can't see it, it's not there. Please, and I've said this in other videos, please, anywhere in this video, please point out an air molecule. There's air all around me. I'm breathing it right now. But please, do you see any? Tell me what it, what it sounds like. Tell me what it smells like. Draw me a picture of it. You can't. But does that mean it doesn't exist? Now, just imagine if somebody says, well, if you base it on that, then I don't know if I believe in it anymore. Well, does that mean now you're going to drop dead because all of a sudden you didn't believe that oxygen exists? So now you're not breathing it anymore? That's the entrapment. So I'm going to continue to make as many videos as I can. And the only thing I ever ask people to do is listen with an open mind, do your own research, and if you feel my information can benefit other people, I need your help. I need you to share this stuff. I'm not asking for donations, because you know what? I make my own way. As much as I can financially struggle, I'm not here to say, here, gimme, 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 and I'll give you. No, I do this freely because that's what the world should be about. But you have to look in within yourself. Listen to everyone and believe in none. That's the one good thing about Chris Duane that I used to watch when I found out he basically was doing all that wonderful setup to end up ultimately selling the one thing he was trying to scare people into thinking they needed. We all fall into traps based on our trust, through our naivety, our gullibility, our love, our wanting to help. And that is what evil people use to take advantage of everyone. They've done it for the longest time. And it's about darn time somebody spoke up about it. And because I no longer live in fear, I control my amusement park. I control my movie. I'm the director of my movie. I just can't do it perfectly yet because I don't even myself understand everything. So if you have a belief system, it's going to be hard because you have to, as they say in Star Wars, you must unlearn what you have learned. And they've spent your whole life conditioning you to believe, to trust others, to look outside yourself. Why do you think they made God into this puffy, you know, guy in a puffy cloud? He's trying. They're trying to teach you that you're separate, to look elsewhere. So when you have a problem, they want you to get down on your knees and pray outside instead of looking inside. Some of you are going to have, after watching this video, very large aha moments. Some of you will have never seen this much. And you know what? They can hate all they want. I will feel sorry for them because they are never going to feel what it's like to know that you have the ultimate control in what happens in your life. It all breaks down to choice and whether or not you're willing to, to get rid of your belief system. That's what the beauty of free will is. The choice to do everything or the choice to do nothing. The choice to do the right thing or the choice to do the wrong thing. But because the world and the universe is made of energy and magnetism, you will always ultimately receive what you ultimately give. Excuse me a second. Shy, get away from that. Sorry, my cat was using one of our boxes as a scratching post. <clears throat> so, I'm going to leave this video short. Uh, for me, I guess about a 40-minute 40 40 minute video is kind of uh, short for me. But uh, pass this on. Give it a thumbs up. Share it. Post it on your social networks. Watch it as many times as you want until you understand that you ultimately are responsible for what you do and don't do. When I used to say that, I had no idea how true that was. It's inner self. It's intelligence. It's in sight. It's the single eye. I am the single eye. They're not talking this. So it's not evil unless you choose to believe it's evil. And if you believe it's good or you believe it's evil, they got both of you controlled. Stop believing, start knowing, and you will be on a better path. Because instead of hoping that somebody pointed you in the right direction and you're putting all your trust in them, 
you make your own decision, which means if you fail, be responsible. But you can always back up and take another path. My name is Chris. This is Barnon11970. I thank you as always for watching my videos. And uh, I'd love to hear your comments. And thanks for those who take the time to share my videos. So props out to all the people out there that make those efforts. It's appreciated. And I hope this helps people. And remember, guys, I'm not driving your car. I'm the passenger trying to teach you how to drive. Don't just rely on me or anyone else to do your job. You got to start taking responsibility or you will be controlled the rest of your life. And the sad part is the majority of people will never believe it. Always comes down to belief. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you turn it into the no. And I don't mean N-O. I mean N-O-K-N-O-W. Sorry about that brain freeze. What a way to end the, the uh, video. Peace.